Behind the Scene with David Bedeen, April 29th, 2020, Israel Independence Day. Seven threats facing Israel and how Israel can fight back. Remember, there is much strength in public activism that people can use with Israel to bring about change. Let's view seven threats that are facing Israel at this time. One, murder advocacy. Mahmoud Abbas, the head of the Palestine Liberation Organization and the Palestine Authority, has enacted an unprecedented law which provides an automatic gratuity, a gift, for anyone who murders a Jew, and he gets away with it. That gift goes to the killer and the, to his family for life. This is an official enacted PLO incentive to murder. How to fight back? Give uh, one, give Abbas one week to cancel his pay to slay legislation. Ask all 74 nations which recognize the PLO to join that initiative. This is a reasonable demand. Number two, threaten the PLO that failure to cancel its pay to slay legislation will risk blockage of all foreign aid and business transactions with the Palestine Authority, which acts under the aegis of the Palestine Liberation Organization. Three, having con confirmed that Abbas does not have any immunity from the law in Israel, the time has come for the Israel in law enforcement system to prosecute Abbas as an accessory to genocidal murder. Since Abbas states publicly and repeatedly that he will continue to pay anyone who will murder a Jew, he can be charged with the crime of genocide, one of the few laws in Israel which carries a death penalty. It was used once before with Adolf Eichmann, whose defense was that he was only following orders to murder Jews. In contrast, Abbas gives the order to murder Jews. The second issue facing Israel, number two, UNRWA's budget, with 54% of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, UNRWA agency, is, mere, is, is earmarked to education. The time has come to mobilize citizens of UNRWA and donor nations to remove PLO curriculum from the UNRWA schools. UNRWA donors would be asked to stop the usage of the, of the diplomatic pouch to distribute the curriculum based on terror. Number three, Abbas's PhD thesis. Mahmoud Abbas regularly distributes his PhD thesis to all major Palestinian Authority universities and the schools around the world. In his 1982 doctoral dissertation, published under the title, The Other Side, The Secret Relationship Between the Nazis and Zionism, Abbas blames the Zionists, he blames the Zionists for the mass murder of Jews in World War II as collaborators, collaborators with the Nazis. Now, how do you fight back? Mobilize families of concentration camp survivors to press, nation, to press nations that donate to the PLO to demand the removal of the Abbas PhD from all schools anywhere, whether it's in the Palestinian Authority or anywhere in the world. Number four, the non-ratification of the Oslo Accord. It is often overlooked that the Palestine Liberation Organization, the PLO, never ratified the Oslo Accord and never canceled its PLO charter to liberate all of Palestine. Russia and the United States witnessed the signing of that accord on September 13, 1993, in good faith on the White House lawn. How do we fight back? The time has come to ask that legislative bodies of both the United States and Russia demand that the PLO finally ratifies the Oslo Accord and cancels the PLO covenant. The US and Russia must be held accountable for making this demand. They witness the agreement, they guarantee the agreement, Let's see the agreement. Number five, the PLO media. In the spirit of the Oslo Accords, Israel loaned the PLO, the Palestine Liberation Organization, its TV, radio, and internet frequencies to create a communication system to promote peace and reconciliation. However, 
the PLO has used the, its electronic communication, its frequencies, which are owned by Israel, to preach war against Jews consistently for the last 25 years. Since the, since the uh, current um, coronavirus epidemic, the PLO has used its radio, TV, and internet frequencies to, to promote the unbelievable blood lie that Jews spread the virus to contaminate the PLO, the, uh, by the PLO population, the Palestine Arab population, even saying that matzahs, matzahs, the unleavened bread that Israel, Israel, that Jews eat during the Passover, have been contaminated and and uh, are designed to to poison the Palestinian population. Number, the, the time has come. Now, how do you fight back? The time has come to demand that the Israel Ministry of Education cut off the Israel-owned frequencies that are operated by the PLO. That can only be done when more people tune into the PLO, the, the PLO's radio station known as the Palestine Broadcast Corporation, which broadcasts 24-7 on the Internet. Access to the PBC used to be impossible. That is no more. Next issue is the issue of the refugees who still exist and still are, are, are wallowing in 59 refugee camps run by UNRWA, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, financed by 67 nations, which indoctrinates 5.5 million refugee descendants from, from the 1948 war, that they have the right to exercise the right of return by force of arms to villages that, led, that were left in, left in the wake of the 1948 war. Well, how do you fight back? There's a six. There's a six-point uh, plan how to fight back on that one. Bring leading first of all before getting to the six points. Bring the leading funders of UNRWA to adopt a policy initiative that will ask the parliament of each nation that funds UNRWA to continue that to condition funds to UNRWA on solid principles that confirm and uh, with UN values. Now, the first one would be to cancel the new Palestine, the UNRWA curriculum, which incorporates principles of jihad, martyrdom, and right of return by force of arms in UN schools, which are supposed to promote the UNRWA slogan of peace. It doesn't happen. The path to peace, however, begins in the classroom and not in these classrooms where Palestinian children are taught that they, they have the right to conquer all the land from the Jordan River to the sea, the Mediterranean Sea. And what will become of the Jews, it says in a recent textbook, and we, you can see it on our website, israelbehindthenews.com, children declare that children, that, that Jews currently living in the state of Israel will be exterminated. Next issue, cease military operations, Palestinian para, paramilitary training in all schools. UNRWA should, be, should demonstrate commitment to UN principles for peace education, the training of child soldiers is in flagrant violation of UN principles and international law. Next, insist that UNRWA dismiss employees affiliated with Hamas in accordance with the laws on the books of many of the donor nations, including Canada, the EU, and the UK, and it's, for, it's for prohibited to provide aid to any agency that employs members of that of, of terrorist organizations. Next, fiscal trans, transparency. All donor nations that flow, that 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 uh, donate to UNRWA must be audited. Since the UN itself does not provide any funds, there's no internal audit uh, audit currently taking place. This would address the the widespread documented reports of wasted resources, duplication of services, and the undesired flow of cash to terrorist groups. And uh, this, is the, this is at a time when Gaza-based terror groups basically took over UNRWA 20 years ago, and that's being ignored, continues to be ignored. Next, introduce UNHCR standards, United Nations High Commission for Refugee Standards, to UNRWA to advance the idea that, our, uh, that all refugees should be resettled instead of keeping them in refugee camps. Current UNRWA policy is that refugee resettlement would interfere with the right of return to Arab villages that existed before 1948. 
so that no real attempt is made at resettlement. Furthermore, according to the UNRWA, refugee status is inherited, and therefore Palestinian refugees now number more than 5.5 million. The UNHCR, the UNHCR does not endorse inherited status, so all other, all other refugees in the world basically are resettled without any issue of right of return. It, essentially, it is essential that such conditions be attached to the UNRWA ongoing operations. So the next generation is not trained to revere violence, jihad, martyrdom, all in the name of the right of return to villages which existed before 1948. And number seven, last, last and, and uh, not least, is Germany. When the United States canceled its funds to UNRWA because of UNRWA incitement, Germany increased its funds to UNRWA and became de facto UNRWA's leading funder, streaming funds to UNRWA without any requirements whatsoever. How do you fight back on that issue? Create a foundation search committee to find foundations, independent foundations, that would support the translation of all UNRWA material that, that we have into German in order to present the evidence to the German Bundestag and to world public opinion. Germany knows very well that the Holocaust began in their classrooms. This is David Bedin reporting behind the scene with David Bedin on Israel Independence Day, April 29th, 2020. Thank you for watching. The new U.S. peace plan for the Middle East demands an end to incitement and violence. And the president did something unique. He recognized basically the conditions on the ground, recognized reality mm -hmm. that in order for these two groups to live in peace, um, there's going to have to be some give and take here. And one of those pieces of the, the give is to understand you cannot continue down the road of indoctrination uh, if there's going to be any peace in the region. That just makes sense. And so that's what the president wants to ensure uh, happens to protect the people of Israel. 72 years after the Arab-Israeli war, five million descendants of Arab refugees from 1948 still dwell in the squalor of 59 refugee camps. The camps are run by UNRWA, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency. The residents are indoctrinated with the notion that they have the right to return to villages that existed before 1948. This is a core principle of the PLO, the Palestine Liberation Organization.
راجع بلادي راجع بلادي على أرض الأقصى راجع بلادي أنا ولادي أنا ولادي على أرض الأقصى راجع بلادي يا محل الكعدة يا محل الكعدة في حكورتنا يا محل الكعدة ما بنسى وعدي ما بنسى وعدي نرجع أرضنا وما بنسى وعدي Because of the antithetical culture of UNRWA, Arab refugees remain in the camps. UNRWA provides health, education, and health services. At the same time, it promotes an ideology that perpetuates war, encouraging residents to remain in their homes until they can conquer Israel and create a new country of Palestine. For decades, the United States was the lead donor to UNRWA, paying for about half its $1.2 billion budget. The U.S. stopped funding UNRWA last year after it determined that American tax dollars had been used to prolong the suffering of yet another generation of refugees. Within UNRWA schools, peace is never discussed. Instead, war is taught daily in prose and in songs. No, نحنا الثورة والغضب نحنا من الأجواء المنع والمنع إن كتب تاريخ الأبطال ولما أم الاختيارة صوب إحنا دات عالجارة وقتلا جن الحجارة تانرشك عالدورية تانرشك عالدورية من العصاب الحول على غريب فلسطين مناش نبيحة بضلهم ضلهم عنا فلسطين الحرة هنرجع بليدنا لازم نهجم عليهم قول إن شاء الله سنة ورح نحررها لازم نحربهم عشان نرجع أرضنا لازم نقومهم ونرجع أرضنا اللي أخذوها منا هيئة لما أجلعونا منها بالقوة إحنا لازم نطلعها لازم نطلعها من بلادها بالقوة وغصب عنهم رح يطلعوا مش رح يضل الفلسطين في فل... إسرائيل في فلسطين لأن فلسطين مش للبيع والقس مش للبيع رح يضلها إلنا القس على اسمة فلسطين الأبدية نحربهم ونقومهم بأك... يعني بأكثر إشي بنقدر نعمله في القرآن الكريم مكتوب بأنه زوال إسرائيل راح يتم على يد الفلسطينيين. At UNRWA schools, education is not limited to texts and is not confined to the classroom. Inside schoolyards, students pass by violent graffiti that glorifies killers. One of the Palestinian heroes is Dalal Mugrabi, whose image adorns alleyways near UNRWA schools and neighborhoods. In 1978, she led a terror gang that commandeered a bus and murdered 38 passengers, including 13 children. On the paths of UNRWA camps, children speak about Mugrabi with awe and reverence. صور شهداء سووا عملية إن سووا عملية لجل الوطن يعني دلال مغربي سوت عملية تفجير وسوت فجرت حارة عند جيش يعني زي أخت وأم بنت بلدي. دلال المغربي هي شهيدة فلسطينية شردت فجرت اليهود وهجرتهم. دلال المغربي أول شهيدة فلسطينية 
سوت فجرت من الجيش الاسرائيلي يعني سوت عمليه استشهاديه UNRWA schools portray Mugrabi as a role model. In its current curriculum, Mugrabi's photo appears in a study book for third graders. It is a key lesson in Our Beautiful Language, a new textbook issued in 2019. On page 63, pupils learn to chant the land of the nobles. The assignment calls for kids to liberate Palestine and to exterminate the current residents of Israel the Jews. Here they chant the song in the classroom. Their lethal melodies do not resonate just in the classroom. Here a teacher leads the same war song during a field trip as children prepare for the liberation of Palestine with toy guns. When we visited UNRWA schools, we found students eager to deny the existence of Israel or any Jewish connection to the land. Given America's new insistence that Palestinians eliminate incitement and violence, perhaps more UNRWA donor countries will ask why they allow millions to live as refugees in perpetuity.